Misinformation must be the most misinformed term currently kept in a sack of overly repeated utterances that appear to be creating the new world as we speak. Oh, it's absolutely essential, you know. Long may it continue, I say. You know, I especially like it when it's used by someone who has absolutely no information whatsoever on the subject that they are categorically and unequivocally sure that you are misinformed on. Are you saying that there isn't any um, uh, misinformation clogging up the arteries and the venules of uh, sensible communication? On the contrary, Boris, if you dissect any statement, principle or belief deep enough and for long enough, it becomes misinformation to everyone except yourself. Oh, please. Every piece of information will always remain misinformation for at least a small subsection of society. Proving why we must clamp down on this stuff. Who? You and the media? Pointing out misinformation? Implying that you're in possession of true information? Then using that to justify a power grab against the evil individuals who don't accept the governmental media machine as gospel? I wonder what that would look like. Well, um, uh, I, I, I mean... Uh... But of course we already know, Boris. China. Look, unlike you, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Oh, another one from the sack of overly repeated utterances. Who go around dreaming up uh, horrid futures that have no basis in reality. Uh, Beijing is 5,055 miles that way. Misinformation is a weed, right? You're a gardener, I know. But what you appear to be forgetting is that if you allow uh, weeds to grow rampantly, they're going to uh, sap the beauty of the um, flower bed. Uh, did your tomatoes get blight? Yes, just like the rest of the country. But we need to extract those uh, pesky weeds before they uh, suck the life force out of society. You know, those weeds, my likeable but clearly misinformed friend, are the dandelions of uh, misinformation. We're being primed for obedience, but slow enough so the frog doesn't jump out of the boiling water. These kinds of conversations are extremely disconcerting to Harry Meghan Markle Windsor, and he's just walked in. Oh, there he is. Oh, despite my cheery entry, I'm not in the best of moods. I saw that uh, Piers Morgan got away with it. That tricky badger. I mean, what is the world coming to? I mean, my Megan had to take time away from her busy schedule of going round the world, giving advice to people who didn't ask for it, to ring the ITV bosses herself. Um, oh, I remember, I remember, after his uh, abhorrent comments. I mean, let's just all agree, shall we? They were abhorrent comments. Uh, you know, I can't remember exactly what they were. But uh, I, I distinctly remember when I heard them thinking, my lord, it's disgraceful. Oh, I can't remember exactly what he said either. In fact, I keep forgetting. So I wrote it down in a notepad, and I, then I forgot to bring the notepad. <gasps> oh, don't worry about it. You know, oh my God, I, I'm forgetful too. I mean, the things I've forgotten, you know, marriage vows, uh, why civil liberties are essential, you know, things like that, uh, and many more, in fact. <laughs> Your amnesia has been noted. Customer. You always make me feel better. You know, you're amazing. Everybody else speaks down to me, except for you and Dr. Cobalt Jackson. Oh, well, you really are back in love, aren't you? Don't get jealous. Uh, apologies, dear chap, apologies. I, I, I'm very fond of you. That's all it is, I'm very fond. And I remember the discomfort he put you through in the past. Uh, but no, 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 none of my business, none of my business. Now, what's all this about uh, everyone talking down to you? What do you mean? It's like they think I can't handle things, you know? I can handle things. I'm smart. You're as sharp as a shiny chisel, fresh from the whetstone of intelligence. Look, I'm going to have to start speaking out just that little bit more, I think. The people are thirsting for it, Hazza. Thirsting. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah, I think that they need the intergalactic Hasmonaut to return to Earth to say hello a little more frequently. You know, recently, 
I've been a little bit selfish, I have to admit, in a good way, you know, a good way. I've spent a little bit of time with my family, a little bit of time with myself, concentrating on my mental health. Starting to show. Well, oh, that's something we all need to do more of. Yeah, get people thinking about themselves even more. Exactly. Look, mental health disease is a, uh, a, a ticking time bomb, you know? And we need to bifurcate our response to it. We need uh, the counselling alongside medical intervention. Inflate the identity, numb the experience. And none of this is going to happen, you know, by itself. We need, you know, amiable ambassadors aiming at a uh, almighty augmentation, uh, allowing an autocratically arrived at antidote. Look, I am completely behind whatever it is we're talking about right now. You know, sounds great. Great. I'll drink to that. Well, that's me. Just popped in say hello. I'm still feeling a bit down about this whole Piers Morgan thing. I think I'm gonna go home, stick my feet up, have a nice blueberry muffin and a warm glass of Ribena in a latte mug. And uh, when you've finally found out what has upset you, uh, complain about it to everyone. Or work on yourself to root out the weakness and complain about it loudly, you know, and demand change. You know, that's the important part, demand change. Oh, will do. Bye. Missing you already. Okay, well, take care, and uh, like I said, complain. Get people to demand change so you can vacuum up the rest of their freedoms on the way. Yes, but for our own good. That was the video. If you want to see any more of this mad lot, it might be worth hitting the notification bell and subscribing, liking, and sharing the channel. Thanks. Did you see Harry and Meghan get booed at the Emmys? No. A picture of their interview came up on the screen and the boos rang through the audience. Well, well, they look at you, reveling in their supposed misfortune. You, know? you accuse me of malpractice and uh, malevolence, you know? albeit always with a glint of mischief in the eye. Besides, haven't seen it reported. Funny that, even funnier that the broadcaster decided to mute the booing. It's almost like they're complicit in repainting reality in a manner that's favourable to a predefined narrative. What narrative? That Harry and Meghan are more popular than they really are? That their philosophy is more ubiquitous than it really is? Why? To dissuade those who hold contrary beliefs from broadcasting them? If that be the outcome, then I'm all for it, okay? How could you, or anyone, in all good conscience, you know, disagree with anything? That wonderful, wonderful couple, I have to say. What exactly do you mean by good conscience, Boris? You know, they spread love and compassion around the world, conveniently sticking their oar in on uh, ethical issues and uh, always on the side that uh, implicitly supports further government intervention. You didn't even try to answer what you meant by good conscience, but luckily your true motive was unveiled by your unflinching honesty in matters of dastardly deception. Well, you've always got to be upfront and honest with people. Yeah. Like, like yourself. I like you. You're a nice guy. I enjoy our chats and our interplays. You know, you've got well-argued, considered opinions. But politically, I'd brand you a raving conspiracy theorist nutcase bigot. And, um, you know, I'd have you and your opinions demonised until we can pass laws preventing them from being put forward. A little bit arrogant. No, 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 let's just, uh, you know, do nothing, shall we? Just let anyone say whatever they want to say, you know, and watch a tide of liquid nastiness pour over the whole human race because people like Meghan and Hazza are concerned they might sound a little bit arrogant. That's a bit of a straw man there, Boris. No, quiet. He's just come in. Get yourself a cognac for later. That's it, Harry. Take down the bad guys with the gift of a Fletcher's quiver. <gasps> What's a Fletcher? Somebody who makes and sells arrows. Genius. Do you want an amaretto? 
Oh, not today, thanks. I've just popped over from the US to stock up on some supplies. I heard that there was a petrol crisis and I thought, better go and get some in case they run out. Yeah, but Harry. <laughs> um, how did you get over to the UK? Oh, private jet. Yeah, but Harry. Oh, please. Uh, how many gloves did you fill up? Only 500. They're being loaded onto the plane as we speak. You know, I thought it was worth it. I mean, I'd feel so stupid if it ran out and I didn't stock up. Yeah, very prudent, you know. And you're showing compassionate solidarity with those who are going through the daily struggle to find fuel. I didn't realise that. Oh yes, your surfing the foamy waves of wokeism has allowed you to dive into any froth you like climbing back to the surface and emerging as clean as a whistle. You can explain anything using frothy logic. Exactly. The very frothy logic that signals a vacation from the realm of reason for a holiday home on Fantasy Bay. Yeah, okay, okay, that's quite enough, quite enough. When evident hypocrisy can be explained away with word flurries whirling infinitely into nowhere, when the ridiculous and the obscene are repackaged as the compassionate and the artistic, Oh, shut up! I mean, um, uh, pipe down, pipe down. Oh, sorry, sorry, that, yeah, that came out a bit strong. I'll forgive you, Boris. Good, good. You know, sorry, sorry, but yeah, that has been building in me now for some time. Yeah. I've got to be truthful. I've got to be truthful. Yeah, but the question is, what is it that makes you angry? And this! Look, here's what you do. You know, that to me, it rattles me. Apologies, sir. I'll behave less like myself in the future. No, I don't mean that. Because, you know, also, I, I like you just the way you are. Don't go changing. Try to please me. You never let me down before. Mm -hmm. uh, do you two need a minute? Anemone, arsenic, aluminium, selenium, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, rhenium, nickel, neodymium, neptunium, geranium, and iron, americium, ruthenium, uranium, europium, zirconium, latusium, vanadium, melanthrum, osmium, and acetine, and radium, gold, and protitinium, and idium, and gallium, and iodine, and thorium, and thulium, and thallium, yttrium, ytterbium. Okay, okay, gin and tonic. It's a bad example. So you do know all the elements in the periodic table, and in a suspiciously familiar rhyme. But what I'm trying to say is, you don't necessarily need to know and comprehend the, the building blocks to know that they will definitely build a beautiful palace. That's a grotesquely eloquent defense of a full-scale reorganization of society and the destruction of civil liberties contrived from the intelligentsia's inelegant, illogical, and illiberal scholarship on a matter of governance. Yeah, well, I thought so. I've always had a way with words, you know, words, well, words are, um, good. You're a poet. Look, the illogical is only illogical to you, my friend, because you don't think big. Okay, you're too rusty, too reliant on old time values, and this insatiable urge for reason and accountability. So reason and accountability are out now, are they? To some extent. Yes, you know, but what you fail to realize is that reason and accountability are bigoted now. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hear me out, hear me out. Actions conforming to accountability and reason are bigoted because when that kind of interplay, you know, accountability and reason, plays out across the whole of society, you know, or, or even large swathes of the society, um, it creates a dynamic struggle, which manifests m m meritocratically. Look, that creates a hierarchy, you know, where some people have more possessions and power, which of course creates a privileged class a privileged class. Now that privileged class gets special treatment because of said privilege, which means that those who are the opposite to those with, you know, reason and accountability, i.e. those who are irrational and blasé, are oppressed 
by systemic prejudice. But lawmakers, billionaires and celebrities are the privileged few. Why isn't the same accreditation of bigotry tattooed across their foreheads? Look, you're nitpicking. And surely the richest and most powerful use reason and accountability to bring about and maintain their power, but they're exempt from the accusation. Look, look. It's a clandestine, albeit obvious, attack on the middle classes and on individual liberty, disguised in fluffy rhetoric. It's like pushing a snip of barbed wire inside a marshmallow and then offering it to your neighbour. I agree. I agree. We should talk about something else. Have you ever seen uh, Pretty Woman? What, the 1990 film starring Julia Roberts and Richard Gere as down on her luck Hollywood prostitute Vivian Ward and wealthy businessman Edward Lewis? Yes. No. Oh. Well, thank God Harry's arrived. Nice, Hazza. Well, I haven't been practicing as much recently, so I'm actually really happy with that. Been busy, have you? Busy? Oh, has it? Wow. I mean, engagement after engagement. You know, I've been working on that song. Remember? Get what's coming to me. Get what's coming to me. Get what's coming to me. Oh, yes, of course I do. Yeah, oh, yeah, classic. It's a classic, you know. Even found myself uh, singing it in the shower the other day. Did you really? Yes. You're being true honest. Yeah, well, yes, I cast iron, guarantee it. You really, really mean it? Yeah, for sure. Like swear on all your loved one's life and cast a curse on you if you're lying. Oh, right. Uh, well, you know, in that case, um, no. Oh. Awkward. Oh, but I was singing uh, Harry Chapin. You know, cats in the cradle and the silver spoon. Little boy blue and the man on the moon. When you're coming home, son, I don't know where. We'll get together then, Dad. Yeah. Uh, I am the morning DJ at W.O. Oh, forget it. Look, the important thing is I was singing in the shower a song by someone called Harry. You know, I just got my facts mixed up. You know, it was, a, it was a completely honest mistake. Oh, that's cool, that's cool. Lighten up, who cares? That's the spirit. Oh, anyway, must be off, the jet's waiting. Going private? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Otherwise, the queues. Oh. Missing you already? I've always loved Harry Chapin's music. You're a sly one, you. Did you see that students have got a complete enforced diversity modules before being allowed onto their courses at St Andrews University? No. They say that prospective students have to accept personal guilt before being granted a place on their course. No. Guilt for what? Yeah, they ask students how much they agree with sentences such as acknowledging personal guilt is a good starting point in overcoming unconscious bias. Well, what's your point? They're only being asked how much they agree with the statement. I mean, where's the problem with that? If they put disagree, they're judged incorrect. And if they get too many wrong, they are forced to redo the test. Look, look, at one point, I, I, I admit, I would have been completely on your side on this one. But, but, I found guilt to be tremendously uh, cleansing and uh, indeed enabling. You know, you feel guilt for what you've done, which is, uh, you know, whatever you've done that's naughty. And that's completely fair. It's fair, completely. And then once you've done it, and you've felt the guilt, you can just go back to doing exactly the naughty things again. The gentle psychopathic padding to that comment notwithstanding, you are referring to individual guilt for individual crimes and sins committed by you, not a vague collective crime that serves no purpose bar the tenderization of the human head stake to a sufficient level of pliability before applying the indoctrinative marinate. No oh, words, words, words. I'm happy to accept guilt for that too, you know. In fact, if I can get my quota of guilt filled up with the collective stuff. I haven't even got to bother feeling guilt for the crimes and sins I actually commit.
Actually, it's a real time saver. Another question on the diversity module asks, does equality mean treating everybody the same? Perfectly reasonable. Students that tick yes are sent a message saying that's not right. In fact, equality may mean treating people differently in a way that's appropriate to their needs to ensure fair outcomes and equality of opportunity. Now, what on earth do you have against that? Oh, come on, I mean, how are we going to fix the problems of inequality by treating everybody equally? I'll tell you what, Boris, one of us has gone mad. Agreed. Oh, look, there's Harry. There's my cosmological hasmonaut. What are you reading? Gibberish. I'm really glad you've popped in, Harry, because I'm doing a raffle for the uh, Caring for Guinea Pigs with Dementia Foundation. And I was just wondering, would you mind doing a painting up for the uh, Star Prize? Uh, are you being you know, serious? Absolutely, I am. You okay, Harry? Uh, you're looking a little bit vacant, my man. Uh, Get him an amaretto, barkeep. No, no, it, it's fine. I, I've just never been taken seriously as an artist before. Yeah, well, here's starting something new. I'm going to write a poem for you. Excuse me? A poem, Boris. Yeah, a poem. No, oh, golly, golly gosh. How sweet of you. Oh, it's just your advice, your, your, your encouragement, and your support of our vacuous kindness and compassion campaign. I mean, they've really helped me become the important public figure I always knew I was supposed to be. Congratulations, Boris. Oh, indeed, you are an important uh, public figure. You, know, you, you, you swan around delivering sermons on wokest principles, which are indeed uh, kryptonite to the uh, logical ones that are preventing us bringing around the Great Reset, the Global Reset, that is required to, uh, to, to, to take humanity forward. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I thought. Well, yeah, of course you did. You know, you're as sharp as a severely bladed samurai sword freshly drawn from its sheath. Oh, <laughs> don't make me blush. <laughs> Ooh. Better get home to start on that poem, Harry. Oh, I know, actually. Private jets waiting, burning fuel as we speak. Oh, yes, well, safe travels and best... Best to Megzi, from me. Oh yeah, will do. Anyway, ta for now. Sweet kid. The taking care of guinea pigs with Dementia Foundation, eh, Boris? Yes, well, it's a more significant issue than you might believe. I fundamentally disagree. What you call weakness, I call compassion. And compassion is a way forward, my friend. Compassion at a localised level is a blessing to existence. But the warped version of the term, applied to the globalised, universal scale, blurs the lines between right and wrong, good and bad, adept and inept. Oh, come on. The only way you can show compassion at a globalised scale is to allow, indeed instruct, bureaucrats to come up with rules on how we should all behave. Whereas, if we just showed compassion to all the people we actually meet, we wouldn't need to interfere in the lives of the people we don't. There is something so profoundly wrong in what you've just said that I can sing you a hymn. But uh, Harry, Meghan, Markle, Windsor has just walked in, so let's leave it at that. That's it, Harry. Pull that rope. Yeah, I uh, threw that one in today because it's my favourite. You know, go out on a high. You mean go out? Well, Meghan doesn't want me coming to this bar anymore. For a bit. Oh, that is jolly bad news, dear boy. Any reason? Well, between me and you, she thinks that you're a bad influence. Bad influence? Me? I'm wounded. Wounded? I'm like a forest stag who's just stubbed his toe and doesn't know where to find the good mushrooms. Why on earth does she think I'm a bad influence? Oh, no, no, it's not just you, you know. She was here the other day. Just not sure that she'd like the vibe. Well, that's understandable. Huh. But me? Me? No, 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 no. 
Nicola. All I've ever done, and I can say this from the bottom of my GNT, is to encourage you to spread your vocological waffle to help weaken the public's defense against increased governmental leadership. So, so no, 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 no. My conscience is clean on this one. Oh, don't feel bad, Boris. I mean, Meghan's just a little bit overprotective because I used to be so brainwashed and living under emotional stress when I was a part of the royal family. Oh, poor chap. But now I'm so happy and carefree and, and I deal with my trauma by showing men, huh, men, the softer, gentler side of masculinity. Oh, knocking on the doors of the feminine even. She's just taking precautions. Oh, always sensible. Otherwise, you can end up with children you hardly see. But I've still got my own mind and, you know, I'm my own man, of course. So I'll still be coming down here, you know, um, or oh, barman. What's that good word I'm looking for here? Surreptitiously. Surreptitiously? Um, what does surreptitiously mean? In a way that attempts to avoid notice or attention, secretively. Perfect! And what Megan doesn't know can't hurt her. You taught me that, Boris. Now, if we could just work out why she doesn't trust you, Boris. Gin and tonic. A packet of peanuts for that? No, too expensive. Have you seen inflation recently? £2.75 for a small pack? No way.